Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Ishin Stack X4 all-in-one flight controller that features an HD and FPV camera. Inside this box we're getting the instructions manual which are just three pieces of paper but still it gives you a good explanation of how to set everything up. We're getting the flight controller with the HD and FPV camera already connected. An IPX to SMA and RPSMA adapter, which is pretty good because it gives you the option of using two types of antennas. A bag with screws, spacers, and an XT60 connector. A braided wire sleeve, and two 14 AWG wires. The bottom plate of the X4 flight tower is a 35 ampere 4-in-1 EC controller with BLLES firmware. It supports this shot 600 and can handle batteries between two to 6S. The middle board is a fish drone F4 flight controller that already comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.2. It has a built-in VTX with a selectable output strength of 50 and 200 milliwatts. And the top plate is the camera module that has a micro SD slot that supports up to 32 gigabytes. You have here the control buttons and the camera is connected through this ribbon cable. In addition, it records MOV files to the micro SD cards on 1080p 60 frames per second. This is a CMOS camera, by the way, with a focal length of 2.8 millimeters. The video output format is selectable. You can choose between NTSC or PAL, and the default one is PAL. The weight of the X4 stack is 49.4 grams, and if we'll add one of the VTX connectors, it's gonna be 53.1 grams. Now you might already notice that the camera has a pretty weird shape. For example, this is the shape of the Runcam split and it's going to be an issue when fitting it into a frame, especially if it's going to be a tight build. So you need to take it into consideration that not every frame is going to be compatible with this camera. By the way, it does have the same connector of the Runcam split and I'm toying with the idea of switching the cameras just to see if it works, but maybe I'm going to do it in another video and not right now because I might risk burning something here and then I won't be able to finish the review. I tried to look online and I didn't find any information about it, but it might be interesting to see if it's going to work with the Runcam split camera. So let's measure the camera, the dimensions without the lens, is 24.3 by 21.8 by 19.1 millimeters and if we measure it here where it's a little bit taller it's 23.8 millimeters the stake height is 25.6 millimeters but they use very long spacers so i'm going to switch them up because i want to make it a little bit slimmer the distance between the mounting holes is the standard 30.5 millimeters so you're not going to have an issue with that and the dimensions of the bore are 36 by 36 millimeters. The flight controller comes already preset to be used with SBUS and it even has this servo connector which is connected to the SBUS and 5 volts. So if you're using FRSky SBUS receiver, just connect it to your receiver and you're going to be good to go. But if you're using any other receiver, for example DSMX or FlySky, just go through the instructions manual and it's going to tell you how to configure it on Betaflight. The instructions manual are not well organized, but still you can find the connection diagrams and it has all the important information on how to set things up and how to change the VTX on Betaflight. It can be also found online and I'm going to put the links to all the relevant information in the description box. So overall, the Stake X4 might be a game changer because at the end of the day, all you need to do, just add motors, frame, and a radio receiver, and you're going to have a very clean build with an ability to record 1080p. However, it does suffer from a big disadvantage, which is the shape of the camera. It's going to stop you probably from being able to fit it in most of the frames, especially in tight builds and I still need to find a frame that will be able to accommodate this camera without any issues and then I will feature it in a build video. In the next few days I'm going to take this camera outside and compare it with the Runcam Split 1 and Runcam Split 2 and then I will be able to measure the latency because this is also a major issue which I still haven't tested because I just got it and it's been raining in the last few days so I'm going to check the latency and compare the videos side by side in different lighting conditions and then we'll be able to tell if this 
video quality is good. I've seen other videos online and it is not as good as the Runcam split to be honest with you, but it still gives you a very good option of recording your HD videos without risking expensive GoPro cameras for example and without adding the extra weight. So this was just a short overview of this tech. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.